Hey guys, so today I'm gonna work a little bit, start working on my Daniel Smith palette and then I don't know how I'm gonna do this or how long it's gonna take. Um, it might be multiple videos just kind of put together. <laughs> so here's the palette that I got. Um, it's 12 colors and here's the sheet of the colors included. And then here's the palette itself. Um, and the goal is that all of these tubes, this is all my Daniel Smith stuff, all of this will fit in this. So yes, it's a little ambitious and a little crazy. Um, and obviously it's not gonna fit in here because this is super tiny. So I'm gonna have to start by transferring swapping them because for my sennelier i think i'm gonna stick with the um what do i have like 14 colors right now and i don't think i'm gonna be adding to it so i can swap these and it would be fine because um you know i don't need to fit anything in the middle row of the sennelier so I'm gonna do that and then I also want to see if these are labeled by any nope these are also not labeled so they're all gonna have to be labeled with a sharpie um, so let me see how that's gonna work this is my Sennelier palette so basically you just go like that when you want to take them out you do that and Oh, they're magnetized. I was wondering what. So these are all magnetized. That's nice. Um, so that's interesting because that means I'm gonna have to keep these really straight so they don't get mixed up so that I can like keep track of what they're called. Um, So that I can label them properly as well. So these all have to be opened up. And I will probably label them off camera because that's not going to be super interesting to watch by any means. And then come back. I was gonna do a live stream, but then I decided it was not gonna be a very interesting live stream because this is gonna be taking a while. And then these just need to be taken out, just some empty pans. And then I found extra empty pans that I have that are very similar to these. So these are extra pans I have, and I have other ones too. And then I looked and they're about the same size like over here they're about the same size and then over here they're about the same size so that's going to work well um, and I counted before and I think I think um, I should be able to fit them all in but we'll see. So I'm gonna take these out and then set that aside. And then be done with the Sennelier. Oh, that goes there actually. Just wanna kind of do that. And then So that's that. So this is going to be for my Daniel Smith palette. So that's going to set to the side. And then this is going to be my new Sennelier palette. And what you want to do when you're putting these in is you squeeze them back in before you put the paint in. You squeeze it in before you put the paint in. Okay. If you do it the other way around, it's not going to hold it. If you put the paint in and then squeeze them in, it's not going to hold the paint properly. Um, although mine are magnetized, so I suppose it wouldn't matter too much. 
but so you don't so you first you want to squeeze it in and then what you do is you kind of angle the the pan and snap it in so you or you kind of snap it in like that although you know what with my um with the magnet it might not snap in anymore which I guess it wouldn't matter because it's going to be held down by the magnets. So, but really, but usually you would snap it in like that. Like for example, this one, you would angle it and then it snaps in that way and then it holds it right there. That's how it's supposed to work. But I think with my, um, with the magnets, I'm not even sure why I did the magnets. Oh, I know why, because they used to be in a different palette that it needed the magnets. Maybe I should just take them off, but it doesn't really matter. It would be either held in by this, by the prongs, or it can just be held in by the magnets. Either way, they're in there. So, although it really doesn't want to, you know what, this one might be smaller. I wonder if the magnets would come off. Let me see if the magnets would come off and then it would snap in better. Oh yeah, see that's nice. I might have to do that. I have to. Wow, the magnets are really held down. I must have used a, a, a good glue to put them all in. Okay. So I think what I'm gonna do is Put all my Sennelier back in and then label all my new Daniel Smith paints. And then come back and uh, see now it's held in super nicely. It just snaps in. And then come back and start figuring out what I have like these other ones and where they're all gonna go and like filling up the pans. So, I will be back. Bye. Okay, so the Sennelier palette is done. This is how it came out. And it's all, as you can see, the, the little prongs hold them really nicely inside. And I just kind of went around and snapped them in. Um, and it fits perfectly. Space for a little paintbrush here as well. So that's all done. And the swap was successful. And now we have, I have gone ahead and labeled them all, which will make it easier. And then now I have to just see which ones I already have. So all of these are going to be unique and not repeated here. So what I want to do is make sure I'm not repeating any of the colors. Because um, I don't have space for that kind of error. So all of these, these are all the genuine colors basically, and then these are all the regular colors. All of these have to be matched up and make sure none of them are repeated. Um, and then we'll see. I guess I'm not sure if I want to um, put the genuine colors separately or not. So this is Amazonite, that's not repeated. Rhodonite, not repeated. Bloodstone, not repeated. Jadeite, nope. Hematite, nope. Hematite, Sodalite, Mayan Blue, Serpentine, Genuine. That one is repeated, so I'll put that up there. And then Amethyst Genuine. So the only other genuine color here is Green Appetite. And I don't have that one, so that's nice. I get that one. Okay. Oh, it's here. <laughs> Never mind. I do have it. So Green Appetite goes right there. Um, I guess it just kind of went in there. Okay. Buff titanium, not repeated. So let me see how I wanna do this. Okay, I'm just gonna set them over here. 
Um, that's theirs. And then buff titanium, neutral tint, phthalo turquoise. This is phthalo blue. Pyrrole scarlet. So most of these I don't have in here. French ultramarine. Moon glow. That is in here. So we're going to put that on there. Um, Cerulean blue chromium. Naples yellow. And I got most of these on eBay. Um, it's a little bit cheaper on eBay. Ultramarine violet. Ultramarine violet. No, I don't have that there. Cobalt teal blue, yellow ochre, perlin green. Wait, what do we have? Perlin green, transparent pyrrole orange, new gamboge, Hansa yellow light, quinacridone coral, sepia. Thalo blue green shade, that one is right there. Burnt sienna, burnt umber, quin gold. Yep, quin gold. Oh, this is the combo one. I wonder if this is if I have the original one or the combo one. P O and P Y. Oh, I do have the combo one. It's not a single pigment. Burnt umber. Quinn Rose, have that right there. Quinn Burnt Scarlet. Raw Umber. Carbazol Violet. And Enden Throne Blue. So, I only have one, two, three, four, five, six colors repeated. And I have. So that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. Um, 43. 13 plus 13. Wait. Okay. I'm going to have to do the math and come back because for some reason I thought they would all fit in that palette. But now I'm not so certain that they would. I actually have way more colors than I thought. So that, hold on, plus six. So I will be back once I... Hey, okay, so a bit of a mess going on here. I have a whole situation happening um, where I've separated them into different piles that kind of go together, I guess. And um, hold on, let me bring that. So... <sighs> <laughs> I've been at it for quite a while. Um, so what I've decided is that unfortunately it does not fit in the Daniel Smith palette that I have. Um, this one, I'm not sure how I was counting things, but it does not fit in here. Luckily, I do have the sticker that they gave me with the palette. So whatever palette they end up in, I'm just going to pop the sticker on top of it. And that's going to be the Daniel Smith palette. Um, I considered this one where ugh, it was like it was just a cheap one from um, Jackson's uh, and I can just kind of glue them down into this portion and then use this portion for mixing but I didn't really like how it looked when I just have a whole bunch of like um, empty or like pans in there just like stuck like it just looks kind of messy and I wasn't crazy about it um, I do have this palette that I never used for anything. And I'm thinking that sticker would go pretty nice here. And then that would be like a nice big Daniel Smith palette. So that's what I've been operating 
with under this assumption where I would, um, okay, so here's what I'm thinking. These three shimmery ones will go one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, and I have the, so iridescent ruby, gold, and copper will go together, and then white, topaz, and blue will go together. So I'll do three and three. Then over here, I will skip these two corner ones and just do this row of neutrals. So here are the neutrals. I have eight of them, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so the neutrals would go here. Um, all of my Prima Tech colors, I have 11, will go into this row, because this row, middle row, fits 11 sideways. And these rows each fit 12, but I don't have 12, but I did, um, or 13, they actually would fit 13 if you squish. I don't have 13 though, so it will be 12 and 12. Um, at the top row, I'll have yellows going into purples, and at the bottom row, I'll have purples going into blues and greens. So that's the current plan. So what I need to do is I'm going to have to put all of these into um, the empty pans. And that means I'm gonna have to label all the empty pans. So what I might do is label all the empty pans and then come back to squeeze the paint out on camera maybe. Um, I know some people like to see paint squeezed out. So, so we'll see, but um, I'm not going to label them on camera because that would just not be very fun for you guys to watch. So I'm gonna go ahead and label them all and try to rearrange it and then I will be back. Like I said, this Daniel Smith palette is quite an undertaking. So thanks for bearing with me. Hopefully this is entertaining. Um, it definitely took a lot of uh, messing around with the configurations to get them to somehow line, align with, with the new palette. And I'm not 100% happy with it because these... Um, genuine colors will be like a middle row between these colors that kind of go together and then these are going in a separate section um so it's a little bit and then these are like going to be separated so it's it's going to be a bit of a haphazard palette but um it is nice and like solid and um i think it will be worth it and will i think it will work out once I'm done and then it has like this insert here so for more mixing space so I think it might be it might be really nice once it's done and then I can finally use my Daniel Smith colors which I've had for quite a long time and I haven't used because um the idea of making a palette out of them has been like too overwhelming as you can and you can see why <laughs> so and also the other thing is some of these colors they fall out so i'm gonna i might need to get my glycerin and like put some drops in the bottom because if you do that with the glycerin the the paint will stick to the palette so um okay thanks for watching i'll be back okay i'm back um they've all been labeled so i just wrote their name and then oh <laughs> I'm showing you an example and then I didn't do it. Um, I wrote their name and then I wrote GS on the side. Supposedly for all of them. Yeah, so I don't know why. <laughs> the one I used as an example was the, oh, that one I didn't do either. Okay, so it's supposed to be Daniel Smith. So that one has DS. I want them all to say DS so that it's easier to identify just in case um yeah so these all have names and it says daniel smith okay so i guess i just missed a couple um and they're all organized so and i think so i'm gonna start pouring a little bit and then um yeah we'll see how it goes 
So I'm gonna maybe start with these ones. And I think these are best done if you pour the colors for, for these like slanted wells. If you pour the colors, oh, why is it not fitting in like it? There, okay. Um, like over here, um, towards the top, then the water goes down there and then it kind of keeps your paint fresher than having the paint there and having the water just all kind of accumulate there. So I'm gonna try that. Now this is, as I said, I'm gonna do the pearlescent colors right now. So let's see how it works. This is pearlescent white. Oh, there's some separation. That's why I was thinking it might be better for these colors to be in these types of wells anyways. Um, for the pearlescent colors especially, because I don't know how well they're going to um, set up, basically. Okay. Oh, that one's like ready to come out. It's good I have a place for it to come out too. This is the green. Um, wow. Okay, hold on a second. Let me try to take that out and still trying to come out I don't know why there we go okay it should be good now that was the topaz which is a greenish color and now I have a bluish color oh that one's like just look it's just like literally just I'm not pressing it I'm not doing anything it's just literally coming out on its own it's so weird um, I guess if you guys have these paints, just, you know, be ready to go, um, when you open them. So that's those three. And then over here in this corner, I don't know if I can try to show you guys. There we go. Um, over here, I'm going to do the red. This is iridescent ruby. Um, let me get a paper towel and wipe the side so that it closes okay. Iridescent ruby. And then we're going to do the... Oh, the camera's like sliding. <laughs> oh, Jesus. This one's a mess. Ugh. wipe it and then try to take some of this paint out because otherwise it's going to be a mess trying to close it. Ugh, it's already a mess. Let me see. I'm just trying to clean out the cap a bit. Um, before I put the cap back on. I'm just worried that if I put the cap back on like that, it's just never going to open again. Try to wipe it some more with the paper towel. Just wiping the, the metal part over here. Just trying to kind of, I mean, I, I guess that's just gonna have to be good enough. And then here we go with the copper. Let's see how the copper is. Oh, same same issue. All of these ones are very very um what's the word? Very excited to come out. <laughs> we'll just call it that. Excited to come out and play. Oh, 
second. Okay, that's gonna have to do. It's gonna have to be good enough. Okay, so I have the pearlescent colors, so we can set those aside. Um, and then we were gonna do the neutral colors. Let me see, let me make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. And then I'll probably do the other ones like the ones that go into the pans, um, maybe off camera, and then come back and show you guys what I have, and then we'll have to swatch it all. So it might be a somewhat lengthy video. Uh, this one is a mess too. This is the Naples yellow. Naples yellow is a bit of a mess. And the ones I use up, or not use up, but the ones that I already pour, I just set to the side. This is yellow ochre. Hmm, should I have been keeping track of what I was using? You know what? I will, I have to actually keep track of it so that I can then label it properly on my swatch sheet. Yellow ochre, so I'll set that to the side over there. Burnt sienna. So these are all the neutrals. Burnt umber. doesn't want to go on properly but it really does need to in order for the paint to not dry out so I'm gonna have to fool around there we go okay just, when you close your watercolors just make sure you do it right this is raw umber sepia let me move that a bit. Sepia. And we have neutral tint. Oh, that one popped right out as well. Um, I'm going to clean that one out a bit too. There's a lot in the cap. If you guys, I don't know if you guys can see, but it's a mess. So I'm gonna have to clean that out just a bit. Otherwise it almost acts like a glue and then it's hard to get the little caps off. There we go, okay. So that's that, that's set up. And then now we just have, oh Jesus, what did I do? <laughs> I got things moved around. Um, so basically, I can set these to the side. The fluorescent colors can be set aside in order also, so I can then, okay. So, the other stuff I need to put into their little pans. Okay. So basically, this is rhodonite. Oh my god, that one like really popped out too. some out of the cap. OK. 
Okay, I think that's enough for right now. Okay, and then these pans are labeled, so I can just kind of stick them, put the, the other paints away. And let me see, these Primatex go in the little baggie. Amethyst Genuine. Oh, see, the caps get a little stuck. Yeah, because I left a lot of paint on this. This one's ready to pop out. Just wipe it off. And so it's already um, kind of difficult. So basically, I think you guys kind of get the idea. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish doing that. blue genuine. When I finish doing that, sometimes I like to. Okay. So I might swirl it around a bit, get it to settle more in. Um, then I'm going to plop them all inside the palette and then I'm going to do the swatch sheet finally. So Hopefully you guys are enjoying the video so far. As I said, it's a it's a bit on the long side. So, um, but basically I'm gonna finish all these up and I will be back. Thanks. And I'm back again with a final look at, you know, the final result. <laughs> so I ended up going ahead and using this one and using the sticker that I had on top so i'm glad they um gave us an extra sticker so that worked out really well and i've been wanting to use this palette for a really long time so um it was nice to find the perfect paint for it so i do have this palette left over not quite sure what i'm gonna do with it but you know i'll save it for some other time and um so this is how it came out Ta -da! And I have these two spots empty, so I can use them as like little mixing wells because they're nice and big, actually, these side ones. So it'd be nice for maybe mixing a more like juicy sort of wet wash. And um, so I have the regular colors up here, and then I have all the Primatech colors here. The iridescent colors are right here, and then the neutrals are right here. And here's how it looks. So if I do end up getting more colors, which I'm not planning on doing, but if I do get more colors, I could, um, you know, I, I would have space to squeeze them in there somewhere. Um, this row is all Primatech or yeah, like the gen all the genuine colors are in there. So it's kind of nice because it'll be easy to remember, um, you know, if I'm using the genuine colors um, for whatever purpose. Even in these little tiny swatches, you can see some of the colors like granulating or doing stuff. Um, the paper turned out to be not so great for the swatch, but it's fine. Um, it was just a sample sheet of paper that I had. Some kind of botanical ultra smooth paper, I don't know. And it's 50% cotton and it is for watercolor, so I'm not sure why it performed so poorly. Um, you can see it's like modeled sort of effect that it's not supposed to be that way, but um, you can see the granulation here in the shadow violet and, um, you know, just the colors that are supposed to granulate. So I just love all these colors and how it came out. Um, I, I just think like these colors are so gorgeous and I have so many of them. It's going to be really nice. Um, there's a lot of variety. 
I only had an issue with one of them drying out. This, um, the Pimentite dried out and I couldn't squeeze it out. It's completely, just completely dry, basically. Um, so I just tore open the tube and I squished it all and I like peeled it all out. It was super easy. The tube opened up really easy because um, it's very thin metal. So it was, it just peeled by hand and I did cut off. So I cut off the bottom and then I just peeled it. Um, and then I, I peeled it all out and just peeled right off the metal and I put it all in there, but then it was kind of like, like a dome <laughs> like that. And the palette would still close, but it was just, there was no way. So I put it back in here and I'll just save it for later when I need a refill. So that worked out fine. Um, and that was the only one that had dried out and I've had these for years, like I said, so I've really had no issues with them. So yeah. Um, so that was the, the entire process. I'm happy with how it came out. It's not a hundred percent perfect, but you know, um, sometimes, you know, you just have to kind of adjust and, uh, do what you can with what you have. Um, but really like, look at how gorgeous all these colors are. It's just like, I really love the Daniel Smith colors and I'm so happy I put this palette together that now I can actually use them because I wasn't able to use them before. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think of this video. And also I'm thinking for my next video of doing, um, like an overview of all my watercolor palettes, like my watercolor palette collection and my watercolor, I guess, brand collection, just all the different ones I have. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, if, like if that sounds like that would be something you'd want to watch. Thanks for joining me. Bye.